Welcome everyone, it is good to be back on that Warpless grind. That's right, I've been grinding every day on Twitch for the Any% percent Warpless world record without Early Hammer, with Early Hammer, who knows, but we're gonna break that record. Since I've been back to grinding SMB3, I've been getting a lot of questions about what these tricks names are and what are you talking about when you say Runaway Bro, so I think I'm just gonna jumble it all into one video, 10 minutes or less. Everything you guys need to know about the Warpless run. The subscribe button right there, press that if you learn something it's only fair see you guys on the other side this trick is commonly known as mfp tunnel this is exactly where the hammer brothers start when you enter world 2 the hammer brother on the far right is the hammer brother with the hammer item and as you can see if you need to get early hammer he has to go up two spaces and go across level four Sometimes the Hammer Brothers can switch with each other doing a movement of four, making it so that the hammer can move less spaces to reach you. If everything is done correctly, you would fight that Hammer Brother before you do level three, possibly taking one death to proc them to move one more time. This is called Early Hammer. And I've always wanted to try HelloFresh, so I'm excited too. We want to see the Hammer Brother here. No way, come on game. No way. The Hammer Brothers cannot sit on the same tile together, so what happens when they move on the same tile, they have to either switch or they get stuck and move around together until they find a place where they can split apart. What happened here is the Hammer Brothers both moved to this tile right here, causing the Hammer Brother with the hammer item to do one extra movement after one level instead of only doing one movement after a level. He kinda got two movements in a row because they got stuck and they had to move apart. So it allowed the hammer to go in between the Mushroom House and level four, and then when I I beat the fortress, the hammer brother moved down and left past the sun level, and then I died in 2-3, and then the hammer brother went left and down after 2-3, and that is the one death early hammer. This hammer brother right here is called the runaway bro, and we call him that because he likes to run across level 6. A lot of people know that level 6 is an auto scroller, and in world 3 we want to cloud across that auto scroller. Everything is fine in World 3, but if this Hammer Brother runs across level 6, you probably see runners reset and you don't know why. And it's because of these bridges right here. Specifically the one below level 6. When you enter World 3, this bridge is open. And the bridge closes and opens after every interaction with a level, not a pipe transition. So if you do 3-1, the bridge will close. When I beat 3-2, the bridge will open, and so on. If you do Hammer Brothers, the bridges will also open and close. It just so happens that in World 3, you have enough levels, 3-1, 3-2, 3-3, 3-4 three, Tris, the two Hammer Brothers, and 3-4, you do all those, and when you get to level 6, the bridge will be closed. So what happens if the Hammer Brother runs away, you're doing one less level, which means when you get to level 6, the bridge will be open and you won't be able to cloud across it. That is called Runaway Bro, and that is why we reset. This is called Door 3, and with a single frame input, if you go back through the door instead of falling in the moat, you'll go straight to Boom Boom. This lets you skip running to the sixth door, jump up some stairs, go into another door, and then you can fight Boom Boom. This is called the H Jump, and I think you know why. In 4-2, if you bounce off the second Red Koopa and shoot it at the same time, when you grab the grab block, or ice block, whatever you'd like to call it, for some reason it will despawn the first piranha plant. What makes this useful is that we are able to build P speed and use the grab block on the next piranha plant and not have to do an awkward turn back jump over him. Boxless is when you're able to skip these two hammer brothers in world 4 without using the music box that you got in world 3. The benefit of this is that you can use the music box in World 5 to put the first two Hammer Brothers to sleep while keeping your Fire Flower and not have to do the 5-1 P-Wing strategy. This will save you a P-Wing, it will allow you to not use an extra music box, and you'll be able to get the music box at the end of World 5. We use a slight P-Meter manipulation here to get P-Speed at the top of 5-1. I like to call this the pseudo stutter step, because it's kind of like what the task does, but kind of not even close. That's where the pseudo comes in. This is called Jesus Clip, everyone's favorite. It's done in World 5 Fortress 2. This saves a few seconds and it's not worth doing in a run. Don't ever ask me about it again. You can use a pseudo stutter step in 5-8 to get an earlier P-speed. This 
This is called an off-screen wand grab, and yes, it does save time. We just call this the 6-9 wall jump. This is called the 6 fort 3 clip. This is a really tough strategy, because if you undershoot, you'll land in the spikes and either take damage or die, depending if you're Big Mario or Small Mario. And what this skips is this full elevator room. This is the sub-pixel manipulation on the World 6 boss. Depending on what kind of clip you want to do, either standing or duck clip, you want to land on sub-pixels 14 and 15 for standing clip, and sub-pixels 0 to 5 for duck clip. Duck clip has a higher window for sub-pixels, but it's a little bit harder to execute, and stand clip has a smaller window for sub-pixels, but a little bit easier to execute, so it is definitely personal preference. This is also a sub-pixel manipulation where you sacrifice about 2 to 3 seconds to guarantee getting sub-pixel 15 for standing clip. You could do the same thing from the other side and guarantee a sub-pixel of 0 for duck clip. Without going into crazy detail, there is 16 sub-pixels in one pixel, which means Mario will move 16 sub-pixels before he actually moves one pixel on the ground to the right or left. Now these sub-pixels wrap. If I move left, I'm gonna be working down from sub-pixel 15 all the way to zero. And when I hit zero, I'll move one pixel when I cross over from zero back to sub-pixel 15. This will also work the same when I'm moving right. I'll go up from subpixel 0 all the way to 15, and when I hit subpixel 15, as I transition from 15 back to 0, I'll move one pixel to the right. We use this concept to manipulate the subpixels that we have or need for certain levels like 7, 1, and 7, 6. Since we need subpixel 14 and 15 for standing clip, then we know if we move one pixel to the left, we've wrapped from 0 back to 15, as long as we didn't press too hard. And if you want to go for the duck clip and have subpixel 0 to 5 work for you, then you just need to move one pixel to the right. This trick is called Fast 7-2, and the interesting thing about this is I made a video about the history and progression of how Fast 7-2 came to be. So click the link in the top right, save it for later once you finish this video, and go check it out. It's pretty good. We call this trick Pipe to Pipe. It's where you enter this pipe right here, and on the other side, when you drop down, if you hold right, you can go right into the next pipe right away. How many times did I just say right? The way this trick works is that you have to enter the pipe on the very last pixel that it will allow you to enter on. It's, it's right on that little white line there. Any other pixel won't let you pipe the pipe. This is the sub-pixel manipulation done on World 7 Fortress 1, and you have to take damage because you don't want to clip with the tail. The reason we don't clip with the tail is because every time you jump with the tail, you actually lose speed, and that's really going to mess up your sub-pixels. Everyone likes to stand clip for 7-6 because the subpixel window is fairly big, it's about even, it's subpixels 3 to 10 work, but this manipulation is much harder to do because there's no easy window where knowing that if you move one pixel to the right or left, you know you have the right subpixels. This one is you have to move one pixel to the right and then try and get past subpixel 3 with a couple little taps. Very tough. World 8 has three stages called the hands, and they each have a 50% chance of letting you pass, meaning getting all three would be a 12.5% chance to cross them without playing them, and we call that no hands. Did you get all that? Some of the parts, I, didn't, I couldn't even speak anymore. I was running out of breath so much, but we made it under 10 minutes. Let's go. Now, every time you watch some speedruns, you'll know exactly what we're talking about when we say, oh, nice, you got pipe to pipe, and shit, you got runaway, bro. But, hey. As long as you learn something, that's all I care about. So like and subscribe because I know you learned something. And my next video, I want to do in under 10 minutes all the technical routing of Warpless. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching and woo, take it easy.